reason I think that you have failed back surgery syndrome and that back surgery in general enjoys such a poor reputation is that there's so many people who have these peripheral nerve problems that it appears just on a, a surface view that back surgery is kind of a crapshoot, you know, it's kind of a gamble. I'm convinced that this is a condition that basically exists because of the lack of um, understanding of the peripheral nervous system by people at all steps of the process of treating somebody who presents with low back pain or sciatica pain. Spine surgeons are completely ignorant about peripheral nerve anatomy and that sounds kind of harsh but that's just the way it is. I've spoken with spine surgeons who you know you you utter the term superior cranial nerves and they look at you like you know a deer in the headlights they've never even heard of these nerves before even though you can flip open any anatomy book and there they are labeled. A lot of times with spine surgeons and orthopedic surgeons, the measure of success is what does the x-ray look like or the, the CT scan after the fact. Oh yeah, it's a per technically perfect operation. The, the fusion is fused, the joint place has been, or the, the joint has been replaced, and we're all good. The problem is, is that peripheral nerves can very closely mimic the same kind of pain that a, pr a true problem with the spine might produce. You have a back problem and it's like you can either treat it conservatively as long as you can stand it or you can have spine surgery and that's really the only options out there. These patients will go and have their laminectomy, discectomy or a fusion and then you know they're not better or they're worse. Inevitably the, sp the spine surgeon um, will tell them hey your back surgery is perfect. Uh, and then they're given a referral to pain management and inevitably they're offered a spinal cord stimulator, none of which will work if the problem is a peripheral nerve one. Somebody who has a true spine problem, they have a herniated L5 disc that's pushing on you know, their L5 or S1 nerve root. If they have surgery, they're gonna do great. They're gonna be that back patient who's just like, oh my gosh, it was life-changing. I'm so glad I did that. And if that patient gets operated on, at best, they're going to have partial improvement. So something went away, something remained, and hopefully what remains wasn't made worse. The third type of patient is somebody who starts out with a spine-only problem, but as a result of the back surgery, has a complication with peripheral nerves. And these superior cluneal nerves that I've mentioned before are are very susceptible to being traumatized or injured as a result of any kind of spine procedure. And so in that case, you'll have a patient who, who maybe their original problem is better, but now they have an entirely new problem or pain in a, in a slightly different location. Although superior cluneal nerves are so close to the spine that it, can, it may be hard for the patient to really determine that. So again, that patient will not be happy after spine surgery. Somebody who actually just has a peripheral nerve problem and gets misdiagnosed as, as having a spinal problem or that, or that the source of the pain is coming from the spine. And so those patients will have spine surgery and not be any better or potentially worse, and they will also be unhappy. So with, within those sort of four categories, only one of them is going to do really well. That's why you have such a poor reputation for back surgery.